Well, it may be the result of that. It may be the result of the passage of time. But it's absolutely true that they've changed their tune. We've had really constructive dialogues with the SEC over the last few months. And that's led up to today, where we have A, ETH, and BTOP launching, giving investors their first ever access to Ethereum in an ETF wrapper. It's an exciting day. And I think it spells good things for crypto going forward. How do the ETFs work? What are, what are you getting? Absolutely. The ETFs hold futures, so regulated futures. AETH holds 100% Ethereum futures, and then BTOP, 50% Bitcoin, 50% Ethereum futures. The beautiful thing about futures exposure is, A, it's regulated, B, you can put it in an ETF, and C, it's highly correlated with the actual spot returns. We expect correlations of 0.99. They'll be very similar over time. It's not a spot product. We'll get to that eventually. But it's really a great tool for getting exposure to. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Supporting great content by hitting the cash app. And by joining the Patreon. And we have Ethereum Futures ETFs launching. But guys, remember, they're not buying the underlying asset. They're just betting on the price and cashing out. And remember the crypto teacher told you. Simeon, today, three new ETFs right here at the NYSE. ProShares Ether Strategy ETF. The first ones, Ether ETFs. What's this all about? Indeed, EETH is our Ether Strategy ETF. BETH uh, is the Bitcoin Ether market cap weighted. And BETE, Betty, is the Bitcoin Ether uh, equal weight ETF. We're really pleased to bring them. We're the guys that brought you Bitto. You and I were here right. two years ago. That's the biggest crypto ETF. Futures in an ETF works really, really well. You can buy it in your brokerage account, and we're trading nicely with really tight spreads today. Speaking of Bitcoin, uh, you run BITO. That's the biggest Bitcoin futures ETF. What is the status of the Bitcoin ETF? We're waiting for Gary Gensler, head of the SEC, to make a decision on this. When is it going to happen? Where are we at right now? All we know is BITO, the uh, Bitto, is a futures-driven ETF with a billion dollars in it and it tracks spot real well, and you have the combination of regulated futures in an ETF, we think it's a great solution. I'm going to get a better answer on, out of you on ETF Edge. Brian. The biggest fear is if he has to go to prison. Not having the Internet. Nice. Now, that sounds crazy, but I do think that if he had the Internet, he could survive jail forever. Lewis's book, Going Infinite, comes out Tuesday. The same day, Sam Bankman-Fried's trial begins. It's the next chapter in the collapse of failed crypto exchange FTX set to begin. It's starting tomorrow. Sam Bankman-Fried's trial getting underway ahead of those, ahead of that, I should say. The hardest hit by that bankruptcy case are now telling their side of the story to CNBC and to Kate Rooney specifically. And she joins us to tell us what they're saying and what's going on and what we're going to hear. Yeah, it's great to see you guys, by the way. And Harrison resigned from his position at FTX less than two months before its implosion, he described a tense relationship with Bankman Freed, and I asked him to explain his sense of the company's financial health. Very simply put, it's a witch hunt, it's a disgrace. We have a corrupt attorney general in this state. You see how she does. This trial was railroaded and fast tracked. This trial could have been brought years ago, but they waited till I was right in the middle of my campaign. To this statement. First, the speaker's statement confirms the existence of a secret deal. And I've talked to members of our own leadership who have said they didn't even know that Speaker McCarthy was negotiating a secret side deal outside of our conference, outside of his own leadership team, for the sake of Ukraine. Second, Ukraine has lost the support of a majority of the majority. The last time there was a freestanding Ukraine vote on this floor, it was last week. 101 Republicans voted for it. 117 Republicans voted against it. According to the Hastert rule, which Speaker McCarthy agreed to in January, you cannot use Democrats to roll a majority of the majority, certainly on something as consequential as Ukraine. So for all the crocodile tears about what may happen later this week about a motion to vacate, Working with the Democrats is a yellow brick road that has been paved by Speaker McCarthy. And we have the bank man's trial starts tomorrow. And we have so many distractions, we know the sheep are not going to be paying attention. But remember, all this happened right around the banking crisis. But guys, we know what the bank man was really working on. $100 trillion derivative market on blockchain being ran by an algorithm. Not a human involved. And speaking of movies, we have the Trump trial, and guys, we know that is definitely biblical. 
And then we have Kevin McCarthy stopping the shutdown. But guys, I'm not going to be surprised if the government shuts down this time just for a little while. But we do know all the spending has to come to an end because the United States is going to be losing that world reserve currency title. The dollar is not going anywhere, but it's definitely going to lose the power. And we see over the past few weeks, we haven't received any media news when it comes to the BRICS nations. And then, guys, we have the UAW strike. And if this goes on for 30 days, it's going to start a wave of layoffs. And remember, the crypto teacher told you, it's so many people that's relying on the company and then also the employees to stay in business. And this is going to be a ripple effect across the globe. Remember, we're in a fragmented world. Each sector has to be destroyed in order for the machines to take over. And remember, the crypto teacher told you, because he knows, when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Day 18 already of the UAW strike against the big three. Phil Lebeau joins us now uh, with more. Time's flying by, Phil. And I think it's going to continue, Joe. I don't think we see a resolution anytime soon. What we saw on Friday was just how far apart the big three are relative to the United Auto Workers. So you had GM and Ford both having new plants that the UAW said, you know what, walk off the job, which is what workers did at noon. There are now five U.S. final assembly plants, two for GM, two for Ford, one for Stellantis. That's about 22% of the U big three's U.S. production. But keep in mind, the most profitable lines in terms of the vehicles being produced, those continue. Right now, there are approximately 25,000 UAW workers who are now on strike. They're spread out across the country. Most of these facilities that you see, uh, aside from the final assembly plants, they might have 100, 200 people at parts distribution centers. And as you look at the shares of the big three automakers, Stellantis, the parent of Jeep and Ram and, and Dodge, you look at them right now, they have averted or avoided another strike that happened on Friday when they came to the table at the last minute with an offer that included uh, adding cost of living adjustments to any deal that's ultimately reached. Doesn't mean that we're going to see a deal anytime soon, but they avoided being called out on Friday. Meanwhile, GM and Ford, oh man, Friday was a day of GM and Ford saying, these guys, they're not in this right now to, to solve this. The, the implication is that this is premeditated, that the UAW has dragged this out. They're not at the table. And what happened when the UAW leadership turned around and commented on it late Friday afternoon? Sean Fain said, you know what? Jim Farley's a liar. So that's where we are right now. We're at a point where they're calling each other out publicly. We're nowhere close to this being resolved. We're going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go. But clearly... We're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the 
the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it, it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of the huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, oh, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETF are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we can have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming. While everybody's sitting at home, get on stocks, the receiver of the biotech stocks. And while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come, Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids' books. You know I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis. Whether it's your job, whether it's in your community, we have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share, but this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figures. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends, so therefore we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1, King Yashua and Dramatium. Save the village. Part two. King Yashu and Drama Team. Save New York. Long COVID 33. Part three. King Yashu and Drama Team. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get part one, part two, and part three of this series. It's time to re educate Generation Z.